Hey everyone, in the news this week, the actor and convicted liar Jussie Smollett has been sentenced to jail for that fictional attack he made up in 2020 in order to gain publicity. Perhaps he'll file an appeal against the decision to lock him up though, on the basis that it's in the same cell as his attacker, him. And Saudi Arabia just executed 81 people in one day, which is shocking really, you think that would behead like news behead. But anyway, talking about all rich countries with grisly human rights records, the news is still dominated by Russia's war in Ukraine. This week's events have seen Russian oligarchs around the world having their assets frozen. You know, it's not often I've got much in common with Roman Abramovich, but this week, for the first time, neither of us were able to withdraw a million quid from the bank, and neither of us are in control of a Premier League football team. You know, there was a strange angle to the sports team side of things, because a number of sponsors are distancing themselves from the clubs, which is actually a fantastic win for the fans, being able to buy a football shirt that for once just has the club's logo, and is emblazoned by tacky logos for other things. You know, the extension of cancel culture to commercial products and companies is an odd one, but it is of course unsurprising to see it being applied in farcical and nonsensical ways. The US has recently seen people trying to ban the sale of vodka, despite the fact that only about 1% of it is imported from Russia. And This is all after a number of people were trying to make Chinese takeaways to boot a couple of years ago following the coronavirus. You know, first Chinese food, now vodka. I'm frankly terrified that Italy decides to invade somewhere, although I guess if they did I might lose two stone. So how's this war going then for Russia? Well, all things considered, really badly. Uh, there are rumours that Russian reconnaissance drones have turned up in Croatia asking for asylum. Russia's got a fantastic rail system and the ability to muster huge amounts of equipment, but apparently they've still not learned how to maintain a supply chain of more than about 80 miles, and Kiev is about 100 miles past the Russian border. So watching them trying to capture it is a bit like watching my kids trying to get the ice cream at the top of the freezer. This week actually saw a Ukrainian man out walking his dog and he found an abandoned 9K330 SAM missile system in a nearby forest. He then, for real, updated the Wikipedia page listing Ukraine as one of the countries who proudly own that system now. Good luck buying missiles for it though. You know, I suspect that's where the arms company make all their money, and that refilling your surface to air missile system is probably a bit like a really expensive version of topping up the ink in your printer. Anyway, see you next week, probably with yet more Russia stuff. If you like these, click subscribe.